This is a super exciting detour, but major indication of what our future of this channel is going to be. Right now, I'm helping Billy Johnson work on his kind of Moto IQ bone stock FD. Well, it's mostly stock compared to the cars in the shop, but in a good way. We're going to modify it a little bit. He's got an Adaptronic, and so what we're doing right now is adding wideband O2 sensor, fuel pressure sensing, some of the most important sensors needed to make sure your car is healthy and tuned properly. So we're going to end today by tuning the car going from you know where he has base tune now to a proper tune for him to thrash on the track if you're not familiar with billy johnson check him out this dude's an absolute monster and in fact holds track records at different places he's gonna be very helpful in teaching us how to take our stuff to the next step as well for not just building cars now i've got that side decently done but now actually driving them and driving them 10 tenths. So that's very exciting for me. This is how a relationship like that begins. This is something more relatable if you have an FD at home. This is something that uh, is kind of those baby steps that you would take into modifying your car. It's kind of fun for me to come back to stuff like this because you remember how scary it is to start modifying your car. So for example, we're dealing with how do we tap in a fuel pressure sensor, whereas on this channel, this is like not even something that we would film, but on a stock car, you're like, well, can I use this piece? Well, if I use this piece, it'll fit in there, right? But that's AN lines. Well, the stock car doesn't have AN lines. So then you're like, okay, well, what's the cheapest way to do? Maybe we do this, but then this is a high pressure line. Like, what about these? Like, you forget how sensitive a stock car is and how scary it is to start modifying, including the wiring. I have long since only been dealing with my own shit wiring. In this case, we're actually dealing with a stock harness that we are tapping into it. And that introduces so many more uncertainties because you're assuming a lot. While I used to assume that my wiring was good, and now I have to assume somebody else's is. We'll just hope it is. Now, on this car, using an Adaptronic on a stock FD, you can cheat, and we're gonna cheat one way, and that is that we're gonna use the map sensor, so it's located on the back of the engine bay, and we're actually gonna turn that into the fuel pressure sensor. It's a very big step because you can't go back. You would have to undo all this work to go back. A little scary for, not for me, but like for me to think about remembering what it's like because now you need to pull your manifold pressure from somewhere else and that ends up being aligned directly to the ECU. Both the fuel tech does it and the Adaptronic does it where you can run a line straight there. So you gain a sensor because you're removing the manifold pressure sensor. So I was, you know, cleaning up the shop has been in a long few days and we get messy. So I just go into the shop and clean everything up. And this was in the trash and we happened to take it out. So I went to go re-throw it away. And I realized that Rob threw away his badass dash vents. And no way. Yeah. I mean, obviously by an accident, but it's just, he almost threw these things away. So now, for that, he doesn't get to unbox them, I get to unbox them. Hey, those are mine. I threw out my own aluminum dash vents. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think they're mine? <laughs> they're nothing oh for God. me. <laughs> the the triangle box threw me off completely. Ooh, look at these. Those are sick. Yeah, that's uh, Landon yeah. LBR. Definitely not gonna crack in the sun. What's funny is like, check this out though. I went and bought. The stock ones as well. I got some choices, but look at how well his setup works. His are actually cheaper than the stock ones. It's meant to cover the same area. I like it. These look great now. Give them a, a year in the sun and you'll find them otherwise. Oh shit, I didn't order those. He must have sent those to me. This is very kind of him. You could leave them this way for like drift boy status or paint them. Sadly for Landon, you wouldn't notice them, but for you know a normal car, you could actually use these and not worry about them breaking as soon as you sneeze near them. We're gonna roll the car into the shop because finally we got some heat in the middle of this cold spell, but there you go, there's the little fuel pressure sensor. And we're gonna to try to adapt it to the stock hard line, then go from there, but it's gonna sit in there nice and clean. This line will come up. And again, I wanna make sure it's all coated and covered so it's all the oil and gas area that we don't want wires getting touched with. It's so hard to believe that this car and that car are technically the same chassis. And I mean that as a detriment to my car. Like, this is an RX-7. That is an abomination. Yeah, it, it does not feel anything like how dainty and, and responsive th this car does. This is just, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. There's a sheep in wolf's clothing. I don't know. It's, it's just not the same at all. This is the moment that I'm going to go back in the video because this is the last time his car ran. 
<laughs> right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna All start. downhill from here. Yeah, it is. It, it, right now, we're gonna do some, not irreversible things, but pretty irreversible things. I kinda wanna save this moment in my mind and, and be like, man, I should've never done that. And I can stop here and be like, yell at myself on the camera, like, don't do it. So here we go. Don't you love my intercooler heater? So the radiator heats up the intercooler oh, charge. There. there you go. It can never be too warm. <laughs> <laughs> electing to take the stock line, which is close to like a 5 16th if it isn't 5 16 I don't know if Japanese stock lines are different, but we're doing push lock, which is something we have not done here in a long time. And it's a really good solution before you start just gutting the whole fuel system. Push lock, you have to be very careful, obviously, for all the obvious reasons. We had a push lock fitting fail on my oil system on the three rotor years ago. And so heat, pressure, we knew what we were gonna get, but just keep that in mind. We've got this, which used to be this. And the positive side about that is these all add an extra you know, couple inches of fitment. So then we'll have the little fitting between this for the tee off for eighth inch MPT, which gives us a pressure sensor. And this is on the feed line. I'm rolling. Oh, <laughs> leave that, that's the shot. <laughs> okay, he got his photo op, he's good, he's good. All right, here you go. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> I cannot stress enough when it comes to fuel systems and stock FDs or mostly stock FDs, check your fuel system. When you see fires, there's that infamous orange, beautiful orange one that was actually doing a photo shoot and the fuel pulsation dampener let go while the photo shoot was going on so the photographer has these amazing beautiful shots of it on fire and it ultimately destroyed the car. The main line on this was very loose. It was holding and it would probably hold forever but it was just something where if you were able to rip on it with both hands you could probably pull that line off it's just the nature of fds with stock fuel system so we have it double clamped we have the sensor in and so we're going to do a power on test real quick just to make sure the fuel system holds pressure and so i can test this right here to see which pin is what wire it's a no fuel system the solenoids are going crazy. Um, nothing I've done would cause that. Uh, oh, you know what? Because I probably because I have this unplugged. Very pissy. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Key off and then key it back on. The fuel system's holding pressure. And we're gonna hear that clicking again, but we're using this to our advantage. So I'm gonna take this off. Solenoids go nuts. Ground one wire. One of these three wires. There's five volts. So what color is that wire? That is a reddish color wire. The next one's black, so let's... I don't remember if it's a stock car. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it started getting... This is... That's the signal line. So the signal line's getting a, a signal that the ECU knows now to chill out. So it is five volts, ground. So ground is black, five volts is a reddish, weird color, and green is the signal. Cool. <laughs> Of myself, <laughs> especially when you're on camera and it's not your car, your quality steps up a bit. One of the things I noticed while I was looking to rework his map sensor, his pressure sensor, is that there is actually a boost leak on the car. There are a ton of little, it's gonna be hidden down under there or no, down under here. Uh, there are a ton of lines on an FD. It's actually one of the most cringe and critical things about the car is that it's just over complicated because of the stock twin turbo system, but five or six inlets or outlets where boost can leak or air can come in and that's unmetered air that's past the throttle body and it's just chaos for everybody involved we have one line to block and then we're going to run a silicone hose is we're going to drill through the firewall area here to run that hose directly to the ecu i made like a perfect size hole and again this is like atoning for my past sins this is like ten thousandths larger than that and I think a nice little grommet might be a dress up piece, but that's not really relevant. It fits perfectly through there. It's clean. I deburred it. And so we have a nice line that will service as the line from the manifold directly to the ECU and tell us exactly what pressures it is. It, it, tongue twister. What pressures it is experiencing. I wasn't able to find a cap or a little nipple thing that you'll see. Like you can get a, a little pack of those at AutoZone or whatever, but since this isn't my car, I wanted to make it fancy still. So I used a little button head bolt 
Oh. Yeah, I know. That's actually probably cleaner than the damn nipples. We'll zip tie this for extra safety. But I don't want anything I do to fail in this car. The rotor engine can do itself in. This is the first time I'm doing really work on somebody else's car. So I just don't want my work to fail. Doing this to cap off that last vacuum leak. Put one on here, put one on this end. There's no barbs on them, but it does, it does kind of help a little bit. That'll at least get us even closer to doing a base map. I forgot that this was running the stock ECU. I was told that and I forgot that. So I'm gonna have to make a new map because none of my cars are even close to stock, have the twins or air, flow air anywhere like this. Uh, it doesn't even work to copy anything from any of my other maps over. So it's a good exercise for me, but start from fresh and make sure everything is done properly. Not trying to brag, but you know it's even more rare than being a race car driver, being a contestant on the. Uh, <laughs> if I had a rose, I still probably wouldn't give it to you. It cut me deep. All this YouTube stuff and everything, I'm just living in the shadow of failing at Bachelorette. I put it where the old boost line was. Yeah, the car's almost all back together. I'll be honest. I think that when it comes to tuning a car, the any advice I can give, it's that shitty advice that like it's 99% preparation we still haven't tested time and we you know making sure all this works knows that we can just move forward quickly like on the rotary vet if you have a line pop off on your wastegate you're chasing things and wasting precious time on the dyno or whatever precious brain time of trying to tune it so this stuff i can see firsthand i know what's going on we see all the lines we got good sensors working all this work is actually all part of tuning so the guy's got the wires for the o2 sensor and the map sensor all down here and so we just taken the power fc out which is set up for the stock wiring harness. Verifying all the stock wires, which is uh, definitely a unique thing, a new chapter in my life. I feel pretty good that I'll be able to pin these wires into that stock harness. And um, hopefully very, very soon, check timing and uh, make sure the wide band works. This is super exciting. We plug the ECU in and already my Lambda, you know, my internal wide band is working and the everything else this is actually working. What is really nice is you can see fuel pressure slowly dying off. We had it running about two minutes ago and it's just residual pressure there. Billy just pressed the pedal and it was 100% back down to about two, yep, there you go, see that working. So all of the sensors came in default working solid. I have the timing gun hooked up. We'll see how that goes, but we're gonna go ahead and try and start it and see if the ECU truly is as plug and play as we hope. Okay, go for it. <laughs> okay, that's two for two this week. That's a whole different ECU, complete fresh base map, and it fired up that quickly. That, okay, that was quicker than I expected. Okay, we'll keep that connected for a bit. She's running a little rich, which is great. That's fine. It sounds hilarious. I'm gonna make sure there's no other boost leaks. I'm not familiar with stock twin sounds now that I'm familiar with these cars, but that's super stable. That is very stable and it's not even warmed up. I have to give a lot of credit to Adaptronic's base map setup because that saved me a lot of time. There's a lot going on compared to the five. I'll, I'll pull some fuel out and we'll see what it does. It's showing us. And if you do this, see, it's showing you where you're at. So, she's idling a little high and that has nothing to do with the tune or anything like that. It's physically raised and so we're going to lower it down because it's going to just generate tons of heat. And while the fans are working, that's not the point. It's fully warmed up and it's hot. a unique noise I'm not used to uh, and I used to run things like this but uh, there's no air leaks I just did a quick test on that but he was saying that it stays up high and then uh, drops down once it warms up well the car's fully fully warmed up but that whole system's disconnected so it's not gonna drop down it sometimes takes if I could drive going a few miles or so then it will lope it'll yeah, start yeah. loping from like 2000 to almost dying back and forth mm -hmm. for a little while and then it will smooth out and have a nice little idle at 900 there is mechanically something forcing tons of air oh, into okay, it, so okay, it, is, it is wide open. That's super exciting. That is a negative 20 degree mark or 20 degree ATTC, and that's I'm on the trailing plug, so they are dead on. So this car is timed properly, so now we can have him go leave. Get the fuck out of here. No, just kidding. <laughs>
blue is super rich, red is lean. Okay. Uh, but you know, ignition situations also can affect that. So, like if you do anti lag, it'll look super lean, even though you're just dumping a ton of fuel. So, right now, we're still 17%. And so, what I'm looking at is up here, but now that we have our target numbers closer, now we can actually see, okay, you know what, that's a more reasonable thing. But these are VE numbers still? These are VE numbers, but they're, they're compared to the target VE. Oh, there you go. There we go. So yeah. now, yeah, it heat soaked. It heat soaked, yeah. Okay, so that's good. That makes me feel good. This is where a personality of a tuner comes in. It's like, do you want to make this rightfully lean? I mean, obviously, you get better fuel economy if you hold this here, but then you have to work double time to make sure all of your enrichment is like ready to go that moment because otherwise you're super lean and then the engine's just like whoa what's going on because right now if i go here give it give it a little baby stab like you did earlier like you did. oh yeah yeah so I, that, that actually went so rich yeah it, it, it killed the motor the compensation table just dumped a bunch of fuel in mm -hmm. now you would want to start like oh man i'm gonna start messing with this and that's the wrong thing because yeah. it what it was trying to do is figure out up here what's going on we haven't gotten up there on the base map so it can't it can't make those cuts Just done that, so now it's time to go up more, and, and it's gonna be something where you're gonna start going. And be like, hey, oh, hang on! Yep. <laughs> so it'll be one of those moments. This is like the third time in my life I have sat in the passenger seat of an FD. It's a very <laughs> trusting moment, <laughs> but it's not my car. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is epic. Ignore the first part here. We are in a, a professional race car driver's vehicle. <laughs> We're almost at full boost already, and the poles are just strong. We're right about to tip into a transient throttle, but I'm right now working on making sure this map's a lot smoother and makes sense for what it's gonna do. But oh my God, the car is so much fun. It is a really fun, solid, consistent, kind of predictable sort of power. We're gonna go ahead and look at the logs deeper to see what it's telling us about that graph right there. The awesome part is that we really covered a lot on him being in control of the car. With control comes a lot of responsibility, all that sort of cliche stuff, but it's a lot of headache. The more you know, it's like ignorance is bliss. And I know that he's cursed with needing to know. I'll we'll have him do a pull when he leaves. The car's at full boost. We're right in the AFR safe air to fuel ratios that I wanted. I feel very safe with the car. The only thing left, and it just takes a lot of time, is transient, which is stabbing the throttle, going from here to there really quickly. We made a solid base map in the matter of two hours, I think. That you build off of, like we accomplished that. And so now we move on to all the weird different temperatures outside, starting hot, starting cold, uh, transient stuff, you know, all this uh, variables. Uh, but you can always go back to a solid fuel map. What happened? <laughs> You're good. <laughs> what happened? Did she uh, lose power at all? Yeah, you lose power. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're sick. <That's> <laughs> I was like. Oh shit. oh shit, I can't, I can't lock this, these guys are still out here, I can't lock the door quick enough and then not return his calls. <laughs> yeah, it shuts off and turn the key off. That is so awesome. That's a tall order to have a professional race car driver drive off of your tune. Oh, that sounds so good. Awesome. Yeah. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs>